The Nimbaka Sampradaya IAST, Nimbaka Sampradaya, Sanskrit Nimbaka Sampradaya, also known as the Hamsa Sampradaya, Kumara Sampradaya, Kato Sana Sampradaya and Sanakadi Sampradaya, is one of the four Vainava Sampradayas. It was founded by Nimbaka c. 7th century CE, and teaches the Vaishnava theology of Devaitadvaita Devaita Advaita or dualistic non-dualism. Devaitadvaita states that humans are both different and non-different from Isvara, God or Supreme Being, and is also known as Bedabeda Beta Aveda philosophy. Topic: <laughs> Guru Parampara. According to tradition, the Nimbaka Sampradaya Dvait Advait philosophy was revealed by Srihansa Bhagavan to Sri Sankadi Bhagwan, one of the four Kumaras, who passed it to Sri Narada Muni, and then on to Nimbaka. The four Kumaras, Sanaka, Sanandana, Sanatana, and Sanat Kumara, are traditionally regarded as the four mind-born sons of Lord Brahma. They were created by Brahma in order to advance creation, but chose to undertake lifelong vows of celibacy Brahmakaya, becoming renowned yogis, who requested from Brahma the boon of remaining perpetually five years old. Sri Sanat Kumara Samhita, a treatise on the worship of Sri Radha Krishna, is attributed to the brothers, just like the Sri Sanat Kumara Tantra, which is part of the Pankaratra literature. In the creation myth of this universe, as narrated by the Pauranika literature, Sri Narada Muni is the younger brother of the four Kumaras, who took initiation from his older brothers. Their discussions as guru and disciple are recorded in the Upanishads with a famous conversation in the Chandogya Upanishad, and in the Sri Narada Purana and the Pankaratra literature. Narada Muni is recorded as main teacher in all four of the Vainava Sampradayas. According to tradition, he initiated Sri Nimbakakaya into the sacred 18 syllabled Sri Gopala Mantra, and introduced him to the philosophy of the Yugala Upasana, the devotional worship of the divine couple Sri Radha Krishna. According to tradition, this was the first time that Sri Radha Krishna were worshipped together by anyone on earth other than the gopis of Roundavana. Sri Narada Muni then taught Nimbaka the essence of devotional service in the Sri Narada Bhakti Sutras. Sri Nimbakakaya already knew the Vedas, Upanishads and the rest of the scriptures, but perfection was found in the teachings of Sri Narada Muni. Nimbaka Dating According to the Bhavashya Purana, and his eponymous tradition, the Nimbaka Sampradaya, Sri Nimbakacharya appeared in the year 3096 BCE, when the grandson of Arjuna was on the throne. Nimbaka is conventionally dated at the 12th or 13th century, but this dating has been questioned, suggesting that Nimbaka lived somewhat earlier than Shankara, in the 6th or 7th century CE. According to Roma Bose, Nimbaka lived in the 13th century, on the presupposition that Sri Nimbakacharya was the author of the work Madhvamakamardana. Bandaka has placed him after Ramanuja, suggesting 1162 AD as the date of his demise. S. N. Dasgupta dated Nimbaka to around middle of 14th century, while S. A. A. Rizvi assigns a date of c. 1130–1200 AD according to Satyanand. Bose's dating of the 13th century is an erroneous attribution. Malkovsky notes that in Bandaka's own work it is clearly stated that his dating of Nimbaka was an approximation based on an extremely flimsy calculation, yet most scholars chose to honor his suggested date, even until modern times. According to Malkovsky, the latest scholarship has demonstrated with a high degree of clarity that Nimbaka and his immediate disciple Srinivasa flourished well before Ramanuja 1017-1137 CE, arguing that Srinivasa was a contemporary, or just after Sankarakarya early 8th century. According to Ramnarace, summarizing the available research, Nimbaka must be dated in the 7th century CE. <laughs> early years. According to tradition, Nimbaka was born in Vaidoya Patanam, the present-day Mungai village, Palan in East Maharashtra. His parents were Aruna C. and Jayanti Devi. Together, they migrated to Mathura and settled at what is now known as Nimbagrama Nimgaon, situated between Barsana and Govardhan. <laughs> Teachings Dvaita Advaita The Nimbaka Sampradaya is based on Nimbaka's Dvait Advait philosophy, duality and non-duality at the same time, or dualistic non-dualism. According to Nimbaka, there are three categories of existence, namely Isvara God, divine being, CIT Jiva, the individual soul, and ACIT lifeless matter. 
CIT and ACIT are different from ISVARA, in the sense that they have attributes guna and capacities swabhava, which are different from those of ISVARA. At the same time, CIT and ACIT are not different from ISVARA, because they cannot exist independently of him. ISVARA is independent and exists by himself, while CIT and ACIT exist in dependence upon him. Difference means a kind of existence which is separate but dependent, para tantra satabhava, while non-difference means impossibility of separate existence svatantra satabhava. According to Nimbaka, the relation between Brahman, on the one hand, and the souls CIT and universe ACIT on the other, is a relation of natural difference non difference. Nimbaka equally emphasizes both difference and non difference, as against Ramanuja, who makes difference subordinate to non difference, inasmuch as, for him, CIT and ACIT do not exist separately from Brahman, but are its body or attributes. Nimbaka accepts Parinamavada, the idea that the world is a real transformation Parinama of Brahman, to explain the cause of animate and inanimate world, which he says exist in a subtle form in the various capacities saktis, which belong to Brahman in its natural condition. Brahman is the material cause of the universe, in the sense that Brahman brings the subtle rudiments into the gross form, by manifesting these capacities. For Nimbaka the highest object of worship is Krishna and his consort Radha, attended by thousands of gopis, or cowherdesses, of the celestial Vrindavan. Devotion, according to Nimbaka, consists in prapati, or self-surrender. <inaudible> Brahman The highest reality, according to Nimbaka, is Brahman, Krishna or Hari, a personal god. There is nothing that is equal to him, nothing that is superior. He is the lord of all, and controller of all. He is called Brahman because of the unsurpassed greatness of his nature and qualities, because he is beyond any limit of any kind of space, time or thing. Brahman is the sole cause of creation, maintenance and destruction of the universe. All beings arise from him, nothing is superior to him. The Lord alone is the first cause, the manifester of all names and forms, and none else. This Brahman is both the Upadana material cause and the Nimitta efficient cause. It is the material cause in the sense that it enables its natural saktis, viz., the CIT and the ACIT in their subtle forms, to be manifested in gross forms, and it is the efficient cause in the sense that it unites the individual souls with their respective fruits of actions and means of enjoyments. Nimbaka discusses two aspects of Brahman. On one hand, Brahman is eternal and great, the greatest of the great, the highest of the high, the creator, etc. of the universe, high above the individual soul, of which he is the lord and the ruler. But, on the other aspect he is the abode of infinite beauty, bliss and tenderness, and in intimate connection with the soul. He is the abode of supreme peace, supreme grace, and the ocean of all sweetness and charms. Thus, Brahman possessed of attributes and adorable by all, has four forms or viewers i.e., Vasudeva, Sankarsana, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha and appears under various incarnation as Matsya, Kerma etc. CIT Jiva. The CIT or individual soul is of the nature of knowledge it is able to know without the help of the sense organs and it is in this sense that words like prajnana ganas veramjati janameya etc. as applied to jiva are to be understood. The jiva is the knower also, and he can be both knowledge and the possessor of knowledge at the same time, just as the sun is both light and the source of light. Thus the soul, who is knowledge, and his attribute, knowledge, though they are both identical as knowledge, can be at the same time different and related as the qualified dharman and the quality dharma, just as the sun and his light, though identical as light taijasa, are still different from each other. Thus there is both a difference and a non-difference between the dharman and dharma, and the extreme similarity between them implies, not necessarily their absolute identity, but only a non-perception of their difference. The jiva is also ego ahamatha. This ego continues to persist not only in the state of deep sleep, because our consciousness immediately after getting up from sleep has the form slept happily or knew nothing, but also in the state of liberation. It even belongs to the Parabrahman. Hence it is that Krishna refers to himself so frequently in the first person in the Gita, of which the chief object is thus Purusatama, who is omniscient and at the same time non-different from the ego or Asmadatha. The jiva is also essentially active This quality belongs to it in all its conditions, even after release. But the kartotva is not independent. The jiva is also enjoyer bhoktr, essentially in all its conditions. For his knowledge and activity, however, the jiva depends on Hari thus, though resembling him in being intelligent and knower, he is at the same time distinguished from him by his dependence. This quality of dependence or a being controlled is the very nature of jiva even in the state of release, just as niyamitva or the quality of being the controller, forms the eternal nature of isvara. 
The jiva is atomic in size, at the same time his attribute, knowledge, is omnipresent, which makes it possible that he can experience pleasure and pain in any part of the body, just as, for instance, the light of a lamp can spread far and wide and illumine objects away from the lamp. The jivas are different and in different bodies, and so are infinite in number. ACIT the jagat. The ACIT is of three different kinds, viz, prakritha, aprakta, and kala. Prakritha, or what is derived from prakti, the primal matter, aprakta is defined negatively as that which is not the product of prakti, but its real nature is not clearly brought out. These three categories in their subtle forms are as eternal as the CIT or the individual souls. Nimbaka does not explain what exactly the aprakta is, nor does he define kala more precisely, beyond noticing, as pointed out above, that the aprakta and the kala are species of the ACIT. But, Purusatamikarya of the Nimbaka school has, in his Vedantaratna Manjusa, described ACIT aprakta as the material cause of the Dharma celestial abode of Brahman and the bodies and ornaments etc. of Brahman and his associates. Prakti, or the primal matter the stuff of the entire universe is real and eternal like the individual souls, and like them, though eternal and unborn, has yet Brahman for its cause. It consists of the three qualities of sattva, rajas and tamas, such as prakrit, mahat, arankara etc. just similar to twenty-four principles of the sankhyas. Topic. Bondage and mukti liberation. The jiva has his true form distorted and obscured owing to his contact with karma resulting from ignorance, which is beginningless, but which can come to an end, by the grace of God, when its true nature is fully manifested. Ignorance is a part of God and is the basis of cosmic manifestation i.e. the arising of God with attributes. To attain deliverance, the jiva has to commence with a complete submission to the paramatman, or prapati, whose six constituents are a resolution to yield samkalpa. The avoidance of opposition vajanam. Faith that God will protect Acceptance of Him as Savior Throwing one's whole soul upon Him and A sense of helplessness God's grace extends itself to those who are possessed of these six constituents of prapati, i.e., who are prapana, and by that grace is generated bhakti consisting of special love for Him, which ultimately ends in the realization of the Paramatman. For a devotee knowledge of the following five things is quite necessary. The nature of the Supreme Soul The nature of the individual soul The fruit of God's grace or moksa, which is an uninterrupted realization of the nature and attributes of Brahman, following from the absolute destruction of all action and the consequent extinction of all sentience The feeling of enjoyment consequent on bhakti, and The nature of the obstacles in the way of the attainment of God, such as regarding the body and the mind as the soul, depending on someone who is neither God nor the preceptor, neglecting their commands, and considering God as nothing more than an ordinary being. Topic. Practices, the five sadhanas The basic practice consists of the worship of Sri Radha Madhav, with Sri Radha being personified as the inseparable part of Sri Krishna. Nimbaka refers to five methods to salvation, namely karma ritual action, vidya knowledge, upasana or dhyana meditation, prapati surrender to the Lord, devotion, garapazati devotion and self-surrender to God as Sri Radha Krsna. Topic. Karma ritual action. Performed conscientiously in a proper spirit, with one's vana caste and asrama phase of life, thereby giving rise to knowledge which is a means to salvation. Topic. Vidya knowledge. Not as a subordinate factor of karma but also not as an independent means for everyone, only for those inclined to spending vast lengths of time in scriptural study and reflection on deeper meanings. Upasana or dhyana meditation It is of three types. First is meditation on the Lord as one self, i.e. meditation on the Lord as the inner controller of the sentient. Second is meditation on the Lord as the inner controller of the non-sentient. Final one is meditation on Lord Himself, as different from the sentient and non-sentient. This is again not an independent means to salvation for all, as only those qualified to perform the upasana with yajnopavidam can perform this sadhana. Topic: <laughs> Prapati, surrender to the Lord, devotion. 
Devotion and self-surrender to God as Sri Radha Krsna. This method of attaining salvation, known as Prapati Sadhana, contains elements of all the other means, and is most importantly, available to all. Men, women, foreigners, all classes and castes or non -castes are permitted to seek liberation through this, the most important sadhana. It is referred to as sadhana or apara bhakti, devotion through regulations. This in turn leads to para bhakti, the highest devotion characterized by Madhurya rasa, the sweet emotions of devotion experienced by those perfected in sadhana bhakti. Garapazati <laughs> <laughs> Devotion and self surrender to Guru. Best realized as a part in prapati, and not as an independent means, although it can be so. Srinimbaka made the Bashya commentary in which all the words of the verses are used, in contradistinction to Atika, which is a more free commentary of the Brahmasutra on his Devatadvaita Vedanta principle of dualism -non -dualism in his famous book, Vedanta Parajata Saurabha. <laughs> Literature Srinimbhakacharya wrote the following books Vedanta Parajit Sarav Commentary on the Brahma Sutras Sadaka Prakasha Commentary on the Bhagavad Gita Rahasya Shodasisra Gopala Mantra Explained Prapana Kalpa Valisra Mukunda Mantra Explained Prapati Chintamani on Supreme Surrender Pratasmarana Stotram Dasa Shloki or Kama Danu Ten Verses Savasesh Nirvaisish Sri Krishna Stavam Topic. Nimbaka Sampradaya Devakarius Topic. Swami Haravyasa Devakarya C. 1470-1540 CE Swami Haravyasa Devakarya C. 1470-1540 CE, the 35th leader, reformed the tradition. He was given the Salagrama deity known as Srasavsvara that was handed down through time it is believed from Nimbaka himself. He anointed twelve of his senior disciples to lead missions throughout the land. The most famous are Swami Parasarama Devakarya c. 1525-1610 CE and Swami Svavarama Devakarya Florida. 16th century. Topic. Swami Svavarama Devakarya Florida, 16th century CE. Swami Svavarama Devakarya Florida, 16th century CE, was born in Budhiya village, outside Jagadri and Yamunanagar near Kurukshetra in modern Haryana, India. He established over 52 temples in Punjab, Haryana and Vraha during his lifetime. His current followers are found mostly in Vraundavana, Haryana, Punjab, Bengal, Rajasthan, Orissa, Assam, Sikkim, Bihar, other regions in Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra, also in significant numbers in Nepal. In his sub-lineage, there are many branches. Notable saints of this sub-branch include Saint Swami Chatur Chintamani Nagarji Maharaj, who started the Vraha Parikrama. This tradition has been continuously maintained over 528 years by the Acharyas of the Svavarama Dwara sub -lineage. Swami Sra Ramdas Kathiababa came to Vrindavan and made his first monastery there. He was succeeded by Swami Santadas Kathiababa and Swami Dananjaya Das Kathiababaji Maharaj. Swami Dananjaya Das Kathiababaji built several ashrams. This branch is currently led by Swami Ras Bihari Das Kathia Baba at Sri Kathia Baba Ka Southan, Sridham Vrindavan, India. This ashram is known as the Guragadi, or seat of the Guru, of this sub-branch. The present Acharya Swami Ras Bihari Das Ji Kathia Baba has constructed 20 new temples and monasteries in India and abroad. Swami Brindaban Bihari Das Mahanta Maharaj at Kathia Baba Ka Ashram, Shivala, Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh and Sukhchare, 24 Parganas North, West Bengal, who has undertaken projects for orphans and aged persons, building schools and elderly care homes. He travels relentlessly to spread Nimbaka philosophy through world religion conferences held in US, UK, Sweden, Africa, Bangladesh and other different countries across the globe. The Sukhchare Kathiababa Ashram was originally established by Swami Dananjadas Kathiababa and is presently headed by Swami Brindabanbaharidas Mahanta Maharaj. <laughs> Swami Haripriya Sarana Devakarya 19th century. 
The famous teacher and leader Swami Harapriya Sarana Devakarya, founded the temple and monastery at Bihari G. Ka Bagicha, Vraundavana, sponsored by his disciple, the philanthropic Sri Hagal Berawala and the Berawala Trust in the 19th century. <laughs> Swami Lalita Sarana Devakarya 20th century. The predecessor of the current successor was Swami Lalita Sarana Devakarya, who died in July 2005 at the age of 103. One of his other disciples is the world-renowned Swami Gopala Sarana Devakarya, who has founded the monastery and temple known as the Sri Galak Dham Ashram in New Delhi and Vraundavana. He has also helped ordinary Hindus who are not Vainava to establish temples overseas. Of note are the Glasgow Hindu Mandir, Scotland, UK, the Lakshmi Narayan Hindu Mandir, Bradford, UK, and the Valley Hindu Temple, Northridge, CA. He has also facilitated major festivals at the Hindu Sabha Mandir in Brampton, Canada. Topic Swami Radha Sarshavara Sarana Devakarya 21th century. The 48th leader of the Nimbaka Sampradaya is HDH. Jagadguru Nimbakakaya Swami Sri Radha Sarshavara Sarana Devakarya, known in reverence as Srisriji Maharaja by his followers. His followers are mainly in Rajasthan and Vraundavana, Mathura. He established the Mandir at the birth site of Sri Nimbakakaya in Mungai village, Pathan, Maharashtra in 2005. In addition, he oversees the maintenance of thousands of temples, hundreds of monasteries, schools, hospitals, orphanages, cow shelters, environmental projects, memorial shrines, etc., and arranges various scholarly conventions, religious conferences, medical camps and outreach, etc. Sri Sriji Maharaja present. The 49th and current leader of the entire Nimbaka Sampradaya is HDH. Jagadguru Nimbakakaya Swami Srishayam Sarana Devakarya, known in reverence as Srisriji Maharaja by his followers. He is based in Nimbaka Titha Rajasthan, India. He is the current leader of the Sampradaya, who worships the Salagrama deity known as Srisavsvara. His followers are mainly in Rajasthan and Vraundavana, Mathura. <laughs> Notes